Greg Anderson's increasingly complicated life was closing in. He was renting a room in this house in Chelsea Heights. But within days of Rosie and Luke returning, Greg was threatening to kill one of his housemates. The housemate, who does not wish to be named, told Four Corners that Greg Anderson had asked him if he wanted to die, before suggesting he would cut his head off. The housemate says he was granted an intervention order and that police arrested Anderson at about midnight on Australia Day. Again, nobody told Rosie Batty. But you can't help but think that some intervention may have just been enough for him to rethink, or maybe enough of a red flag for me to understand what acute danger Luke and I were in. Look, if I put myself in the position of the victim, you want to be a, you want to be in possession of every bit of information you possibly can be. Victorian Police Commissioner Ken Lay's ability to comment on this issue is constrained by an upcoming coronial inquest into Luke's death. I hope to be in a position once the coroner comes back to be making some public comments about, about these issues which might be able to better reflect my views on things. By February, Greg was homeless again. With nowhere to go, he turned up on the doorstep of a friend from the Hare Krishna temple. The police had taken his car, he just told me that. So and he just showed up with his duffel bag full of clothes and that's all he had. He stayed, you know, I let him stay that night here. And then the next day um, he was trying to arrange a place to live through Salvation Army or something and a mission and and then he got somewhere in Frankston, and then he was off the next day. Four separate warrants were now out for Greg's arrest, but the police couldn't find him, even though they'd arrested him just 10 days before. On the 5th of February, a policeman rang Rosie and asked if she knew where Greg was living. That particular detective was in relation to the pornography charges. It's him just continuing his investigation. Um, and I was really the only point of contact he would have with any hope of trying to locate Greg to have him apprehended. When she hung up the phone, Greg happened to call back and give Rosie his new address, now close by in Frankston. Rosie immediately passed this on to the police. But still, the police told her nothing of Greg Anderson's latest threat to kill, nor of the separate intervention order against him. It's gravely concerning. We can, a lot of us are very capable of saying, I could kill you, you know, you drive me mad, or throw away angry comments. But to actually say, to decapitate someone, you don't make those jokes. That's not a light, they're not light comments. I wasn't aware of that, but again, that may well be indicative of um, police members not being in, in possession of all the facts once again. <laughs> 